Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer with St. Albans. It is good to be praying with you this morning. Merry Christmas! Um, we have all the candles lit and it is a good day in the house of the Lord and to be one of God's children. Well, let's get started this Sunday morning with some... Oh, we've got some good stuff. Let us pray. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all the people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Our first psalm this morning is Psalm 93. The Lord is king. He has put on splendid apparel. The Lord has put on his apparel and girded himself with strength. He has made the whole world so true that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. Ooh, I just, that might be a little small. I apologize. There you go. Starting from three. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure, and holiness ador adorns your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and, the, and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. For all the gods of the nations are but, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and the magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes. When he comes to judge the earth, he will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. 
Upon your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted sentinels. All day and all night they shall never be silent. You shall remind the Lord, take no rest, and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it renowned throughout the earth. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way of the people, build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up an ensign over the peoples. The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say to daughter Zion, see your salvation comes. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you shall be called sought out a city not forsaken. Our first canticle this morning is canticle 16. Our second reading this morning is a reading from the book of Hebrews. It is fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here I am, here am I, and the children whom God has given me. Since, therefore, the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who are all their, who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore he had to come like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. 
Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle this morning is... Ooh! I'll come... I've got some reflections, but let's do the Te Deum first. Let's do that. Your God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. Okay, I do have some thoughts. What's really important to keep in mind, especially, oh, that Hebrews passage is so good. You know what? I'm going to back up. I'm going to take a look at that. That was so good. Hebrews is all about the incarnation, and that's what Christmas is all about. The incarnation means God becoming flesh. You know, we believe in the three parts of the Trinity, and this one part in particular we know as the Son came loved us so much and god the father loved us so much that he sent uh the the second person of the trinity jesus whom we know as jesus christ into the world into time into existence as we know it and he hoped rewrit the whole story and the only way he could do that was becoming like us in the person of Jesus Christ. Oh. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, God couldn't come down as like Hercules or Rambo or anybody some super or Superman. He came down like you. He came down like me. He came down fragile emotional he came down being able to be hurt being able to feel love being able to feel loss 
He did that so that we might be saved through him. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. Dear ones in Christ, the test isn't over. Thank God it's Christmas. But it's going to be cold for a lot longer. Not only is winter just getting started, but we're still in the middle of a big old mess in so many ways. But God loves us so much that he came down and got messy with us. He came down to be with us in everything that we're going through. And the only way he could do that was to allow himself to be hurt, to be broken, and to be killed. But he came anyway. I love baby Jesus. But the power of this season is not in perhaps the sentimentality we might feel at that first family's Christmas, the Holy Family's Christmas. It's in the power of love, in the person of Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, love that would not fail, love that would not fail, that would not cower from the hardness of the world, that would not meet the bleak midwinter with cold iron, but soft flesh. That's what has arrived today on Christmas. And that's what we remember in these 12 days. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and mystery they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I now have your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. We hope that all of our bishops have had a Merry Christmas, especially Justin, Michael, and Alan. 
We pray with joy today with our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world who celebrate the coming of Jesus. We sing a special carol of joy with our friends in Nzara, Iswatini, and Brecon. We pray for our St. Albans family, especially Joan, Michael, Bonnie, Glenn, Laura, and the Weaver family. Pray for the Society of St. John the Evangelist, the community of St. Mary Southern Province. Pray for the community outreach of Spencer. Pray for those who are sick and those who care for them, those affected by the cold, and those who will die today, and those who love them. Know that your prayers are being held on to and lifted up by all who pray with us this morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I don't think I have this. Let me see if I can... Just one second. I've got just the thing for this. Give me one second. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. This is these are prayers from uh, the Saint Augustine's prayer book, and man, is there good stuff in here. But I was I hope that you'll pray with me. Whew. O God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose years never fail and whose mercies are new each returning day, let the radiance of your Spirit renew our lives, warming our hearts and giving light to our minds, that we may pass the coming year in joyful obedience and firm faith, through, whom, through him who is the beginning and the end, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for praying this morning with me. Merry Christmas to you. We will be having uh, Eucharist at St. Albans at 11 and possibly evening prayer at 430 I've got, uh, there's a few pastoral appointments I need to get to before I go on vacation. Um, but um, if I can, I'll be back for morning or for evening prayer at 4.30. But then um, we're continuing our break uh, until next Sunday, where we'll have morning prayer with me and Elizabeth and some music. And then we will be back at morning prayer on the 7th of January, the day after the Epiphany. So... I hope that you have enjoyed this. I hope that you are, ha are having a very Merry Christmas. Uh, you've got plenty of Christmas left. So hopefully you're still able to find some fudge or uh, discover a, a missing stash of cookies. And, you're, and you keep feasting because this is a time for celebration. So until I get back from vacation, God bless you. God keep you. And you keep the faith. Bye.